Greetings, my name is Andy Carter. I'm a professional engineer in the state of Texas. In this tutorial, we're going to look at harvesting and compositing terrain data from Texas Natural Resource Information Service to create a seamless DEM. The state of Texas currently has all of the terrain data shown within the green limits. By 2021, it is anticipated that contiguous coverage across the entire state will be available at a resolution of one meter. For this tutorial, I'm going to show you how I downloaded and composited 53 square miles of one meter terrain data for an area of the Walnut Creek watershed, which is just on the northeast side of the city of Austin. In this area, the state of Texas provides the data in quarter quadrangles, which is shown on the left. Ten cover the subject watershed. The terrain data is actually served in quarter, quarter, quarter quadrangles, which is shown on the right, and there are approximately 79 that cover the subject basin. Most folks do this process manually. The goal of this tutorial is to show you how I'm using some automated Python and Jupyter notebook routines to be able to do this without having to manually download each tile and then composite them back together. The first step is to get the project files necessary to complete this project. Download everything from the path as shown on this slide. If necessary, pause, go to this path and download it. You'll get a zip file. Unzip this file and you'll see that there are four folders. The first folder is a Conda specification file. We'll use that to set up the right environment. The second one is a notebook file. This is the code that we'll execute to complete our project. The third has two zipped indexes from TINRES. Those are shapefiles and they're zipped. We'll have to unzip them. And the last one is the area of interest for Walnut Creek as a shapefile. This terrain harvesting algorithm uses Jupyter Notebook, which actually sits on top of Anaconda. So we're going to need to install Anaconda on your machine if you haven't done so already. And then we're going to need to set up a custom environment using the specification file that I provided in the resource files. So let's go ahead and do that. So first we're going to install and download Anaconda. So just search for Anaconda. We'll hit that first link. Under Products, we're going to download and install the Individual Edition. Click on the Download button. It will take you all the way down to the bottom. And for me, I'm going to download and install the 64-bit graphical installer version. Now that we have Anaconda installed, let's set up the custom environment. So we're going to go to the Start menu, and we're just going to type in ANA to get Anaconda, and we'll select the Anaconda command prompt. So we need the spec file to create the right environment to run this Jupyter Notebook. So I'm going to the directory where Anaconda's root network is in my machine, that's C slash user slash VN34GZ1. Once I'm there, I'll go back to that folder where we downloaded all the files. I will copy that spec file, Anaconda spec file, and I'll paste it into that directory. It just needs to reside there. I already had it. I'm just going to override it. You probably won't. So once that's pasted in there, we're going to go back to the Anaconda command prompt. And we're going to type in a command that uh, creates the environment if one isn't created already. And that command is going to be conda space create space dash dash name space harvest. That's the environment we're going to create. That's the name of it. Dash dash file space terrain harvest underscore spec list dot txt. That's the file that we put in that directory. And then we'll hit enter. If you've already got one, say yes. You probably won't. So um, what will happen is the internet will kick off and it will download all the necessary libraries to run this routine. Now that we have that conda environment created, we'll need to activate it. Type in on the command a command prompt conda activate space and then the name of the environment, harvest in this case, and hit enter. You'll notice on the left it now says harvest instead of base. Go back to that folder, copy that O2 Jupyter Notebook folder, and we're going to put that into the same directory where Conda is um, setting its default path. In my case, it's C colon backslash user backslash FN34, etc. I'm going to copy that O2 Jupyter Notebook folder. I'm going to paste it right in that folder itself. Once that's finished, let's we'll go back to the Anaconda command prompt. And we will type in Jupyter, which is spelled J-U-P-Y-T-E-R space notebook and hit enter. That'll kick off Internet Explorer with Jupyter Notebook. We're going to drag that over and take a look at what we've got. 
We'll go to that folder that we copied over, that O2 Jupyter Notebook. We'll click on the first item, and that is the Jupyter Notebook that you will need to run to get the terrain aggregation to work. Before we run this notebook, there are three input shapefiles that need to be appropriately assigned inside of the notebook prior to execution. Additionally, we need to clean up and make sure that the output paths are correctly assigned for our machine. Open the O3 input shapefile folder you previously downloaded. There are two folders that are both zips. We're going to extract both of those to get all the shapefile files that we need for the indexes required for the routine to run. So I'm just unzipping both of them, sticking them in that folder, and ultimately I'm just going to copy everything and paste it straight into the root folder. Once that's finished, I'm going to delete all the other folders. So we just have the shapefile and its corresponding support data for both of the two indexes. In the notebook, scroll down to section 2, which is input data. We're going to change the path to the three input shapefiles. So I'm copying the directory where I've got those indexes, and I'm just copy-pasting and overwriting that directory for the QQ index and the LIDAR index. For the requested boundary, go to 04, which is the input shapefile, copy that directory. And we're just going to completely overwrite the uh, path to the requested boundary put a slash, and then copy-paste the name of the shapefile and paste it into the end of that file. Now we need to set up an output directory. I'm just going to right-click and say New Folder. I'm going to call it 05 underscore output. Once I have that file, I'm going to click on it. I'm just going to copy the path. Under that 2.0 input data, I'm just going to copy-paste that uh, new directory and overwrite. Do it once, twice, and then under the actual file name, I'm going to change that into DEM merge, and we'll just call it walnut, and DEM clip walnut. Those are going to be the composited TIFFs. With everything set up, our final step is to execute the Jupyter Notebook and confirm output. So let's just maximize Jupyter Notebook. We're going to make sure that we're running the right kernel. In this case, we'll change the kernel to Conda Environment Harvest. That's the Conda environment we set up previous. Notice that if it's the correctly selected one, it will be set in the upper right. Under Kernel, to execute the notebook, just say Restart and Run All. Go ahead and say Restart and Run All Cells. Given the size of the request, this is likely to take several minutes. You'll notice that there's a number next to each code block. If it's got a number, that means it's executed. If it has a star, that means that it has yet not executed. So this is currently executing now. Um, some of the routines will take longer than others to execute. It just depends upon the request that's made. You'll notice there's an actual code block that is noted as saying this takes several seconds. That's just a note to say that you know it might appear that it's hanging here, but it, it actually is running. It just takes a little longer than, than not. With my internet connection, it took about 10 minutes to run this routine over the 53 square miles. You can see what the routine's doing. It's intersecting and figuring out the quarter quads and the quarter 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 quadrangles that it needs to make the request. Um, ultimately, it builds a URL list, and in this case, it's uh, looking to download 10 tiles, and it will give you output as it's downloading. Um, and then ultimately, it, it brings all those DEM tiles together, merges them into one, clips it, and then exports what you need. I'm using QGIS to check the data. I brought in the area of interest, boundary of the watershed, and open street maps to make sure I'm in the right spot. We're going to add the raster that we created for the composite DEM. This will be the uh, clip walnut TIFF. It's about 1.2 uh, gigs in size. And we'll go ahead and just add it on in there. Yeah, it appears to come in in the right space, so that's good. Notice that the vertical data is in meters, and you'll need to pay attention to that. Um, also, the horizontal units are in Universal Transmercator Zone 14 for this data, and you need to keep track as to what that is. That is the source data, and that's why it's in that projection. There's a little bit of housekeeping that we need to do under that output folder. Let's take a look and see what we've got. We've got the walnut clip and the walnut merge. We want to delete everything except the, the clip boundary. So we'll try to delete that walnut merge. 
and it won't let us do it. So what's happening is um, Jupyter is actually holding on to that file. It's locking it. So under kernel, we'll say um, reset and clear all, and that will release all the files that Jupyter was looking at. So now we can pick that DEM merge walnut. We can select it and delete it. And then all of those are the tiles that are downloaded, the quarter, quarter, quarter quads. We're going to delete those as well. So we've successfully pulled down the terrain for the entire watershed. So what are the steps from here? Well, you could use your own shape file and get your own boundary for terrain data uh, within the footprint of the state of Texas. Just check to see if Tenres has got it, and if it does, you should be able to pull it down with the same routine. This terrain data could be used in HECRAS for floodplain analysis. You could use it in HECHMS and do a watershed delineation um, based upon the new algorithms that are in HMS. You could bring it into Civil 3D and create contours and, and build surfaces from that. So there's a lot of uses to having one composited aggregate DEM terrain data set. This concludes my presentation of showing you how to use these routines to get composite terrain data from the Texas Natural Resource Information Service. If you want additional information, uh, check the link in this slide. And This is written up in kind of more of a step-by-step -step guide that can use as a desk reference. I appreciate the opportunity to show you a little bit what I, I do every day. And If you've got any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. I appreciate it.